Number five, the inconsistency avoidance tendency. Charlie says, the brain of man conserves programming space by being reluctant to change. Hard to break habits, the chains of habits are too light to be felt before they become too strong to be broken. I'm sure we have all experienced something like this or are familiar with the concepts of habits being hard to break. For example, let's say you have the habit of smoking. It starts off as a small habit. You can control it. You can quit whenever you want. But after a while, the small habit turns into something completely different. It's now a burden. It's now something that's actually incredibly difficult to overcome. This is just how habits form. This is because of the inconsistency avoidance tendency. The habit has now become a part of us. It's become a part of our identity of how we picture ourselves. We are one with this particular characteristic. Charlie also says it's much easier to prevent a habit than to change it. Going along with the smoking analogy, if you've never smoked before, it's a piece of cake to never start. The temptation to start will never be as strong as the problems that arise from trying to quit, trying to break the habit. This is just human nature. It's same with cocaine. If you've never done cocaine, you don't really have that much of a push to do it. If you know what I'm saying. Now Charlie says the human mind does not like change, whether it is for our reputation or our identity, to commitments or to our accepted roles in civilizations. This is why generally people stay in the same jobs. They don't like change. They become comfortable with where they are. Once again, their job becomes a sense of their identity. So when fathers lose their jobs, that's why they sometimes get depressed because it feels like they've lost a sense of themselves. They've become connected with the job. Now, Charlie says the tendency could have been made to facilitate faster decision-making capacities. This along with the doubt tendency that we went over in the last video. It also could be formed in order to keep the status quo within groups back in the primal era when everybody had set tasks, everybody had set things they were meant to do. If you were the alpha male and you were the leader and you are the skills to do that, that would be your position in the group. If you were a gatherer, hunter-gatherer, you would help find the meat for the group and food and produce. Or if you were just a mother, you stay at home. If one person decided to change the formation of the group, they start becoming, they start believing that they're deserving to be a leader when they don't have the particular skills. Of course, there's going to be some problems in the group. There's going to be some turbulations. And this is not good for survival. You can't have a group fighting amongst itself because of the needs of individuals when they need to be united as one to fend off the enemies and animals and what have you. So this could be one reason why we have this habit in our brain set in stone where we don't like change. We like things the way they are because things that are familiar to us are safe. Things that are not familiar are not safe. It's kind of like the biological concept of homeostasis when, you know, things always regulate back to a stable level. They always go back to equilibrium. That's the same with the group and that's the same with the human mind. It doesn't like big changes. They've done research to show that people that win the lotto, that win money, that have not developed good money saving habits or entrepreneurships generally lose all their money within the first two or three years. They blow it all and they go back to where they were. This is all 
a factor of this tendency. Their mind cannot comprehend the new reality, so it has to shift it and go back to where it was. So that's just another aspect that you have to be careful of. Your brain does not like you changing. It likes you staying the same. So there's a lot of friction whenever things have to change. So just be wary of that in your personal development goals. It Not only are you impulsively making decisions through the doubt of Wednesday tendency, you're also sticking with those decisions and not thinking of anything else to do. They become part of your identity. That's why people generally when they form mental habits, they carry them into their graves. It's not common to see people changing their identity over the years. Generally who you are, by the time you reach a certain age, maybe 18 or 19, 20, is going to be who you are when you die. You're going to carry the same views, the same values. They might change a bit, but not dramatically. It takes a lot of work on yourself to change your views and to change your perspective. That's why people that are failures remain failures and people that are success just keep on becoming bigger and greater successes. They build the same momentum that comes with it, comes with the territory. And this is why it's increasingly difficult for the poor and middle class to become wealthy because of the habits they have, because of the mindsets they have and our biology which does not like us changing so it takes great willpower great levels of consciousness to be able to change yourself to know that you don't want to change yourself but it's for the best and to proceed and do it anyway this is why we have the term you know sheep and wolf a wolf amongst sheep only a certain few amount of people in this world are willing to take it, are willing to go for theirs and do whatever it takes, while the rest are willing to settle for what they have been given. They're willing to become sheep, to follow the herd, and to not change themselves because of this tendency. Now, Charlie gives an example of Ben Franklin. Now, Ben Franklin, when he was on his rise and wanted the approval of very important people, he would get them to do small tasks for him, small mundane tasks, such as grabbing a book for him. That's like you going to your boss and asking your boss to grab your book or something. Generally, these people comply in need to not look rude, but because they're doing these things, their mind rationalizes that they must admire Ben Franklin for themselves to be doing these things, to be consistent with this tendency. So this is how he was able to get a bunch of people to admire him by making them do things that they normally wouldn't do that are out of their nature. So our mind generally rationalizes what we do. If we do something, it tries to come up with an explanation to justify our actions. Now this tendency is also interesting in the case of this genius I read about a while back. Apparently during high school and primary school, he was actually considered somewhat mentally retarded or not gifted at all so during his childhood he was always told that he was not smart and that he was not gonna make it so he decided to enroll for the army this guy enrolled for the army and during the army they have these tests it's kind of like an IQ test but it's not exactly that it's the one with the patterns and whatnot I forgot what it's called and anyway, he did that test and he destroyed it he managed to get a really high score. And the army said, we haven't had a score like this ever. You are actually a genius. So this shift is reality now. Because he's been given permission to reach his potential, he now does things at a high capacity. He He's solving math problems. He's coming up with these theoretical phys, um, theories, quantum mechanics theories and whatnot. Just because he's been given permission, his reality has changed. It's all because of this one tendency. So you need to be very careful in what you're going to allow into your mind. Because your brain wants to stay the same. Don't let bad things or discouraging ideas enter your mind because you will start believing that it's part of you when it's not. The opposite is true. If you let empowering things into your mind, 
things that are going to elevate your consciousness and make you get what you deserve, you will get what you deserve because you will conform to that reality. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy that. That's the inconsistency avoidance tendency. Peace.